Hello everyone, I uh, hope you're all having a great day. Uh, in this video, I wanted to make a video here just to showcase how to create a simple shopping cart on the front end uh, using Vue.js, Vue 3 uh, to be exact, and uh, also implementing Vue Router and Vuex uh, as our um, store. So uh, this is a, a deviation from my typical videos where I'm showing you what's going on on the front end and the back end. But this one has value in terms of showing you how to manage a cart um, and how to utilize persistent storage that uh, they can use locally, local storage in particular within the browser to persist data so that when you come back, uh, do things like that. So this is a quick overview. Now, when I built this out, I built this out as a mobile first application. So when we actually go to view this, we're going to be viewing it more like this. Um, I'm going to come down to application here because yeah, this here. I'll delete this. This is all test data, anyways, but and I'll delete that. Okay. So as you can see, it it starts to look better actually as it's in mobile mode. And mobile mode kind of uh, kind of finishes out here at 500 pixels. So or that's when it goes up into its next um, media query breakpoint so but in here you can see we have a description uh, of the product the price and the ability to view the product and if you click on view product you'll see here that now we actually have a slide out that comes um, on uh, chrome and chrome for windows you can see this bar on the side here i didn't get rid of that but if we need to scroll down if there's more information uh, about the product we can definitely do that here we're able to do things like add or remove and if you look over at my local storage here you can see how that's already been stored in there okay and if I do a complete refresh of the system you can see that our data actually persists um, which is what which is uh, what we want in this case uh, because typically what I'm finding in a lot of the e-commerce builds that I do I don't uh, until a person is ready with their cart uh, I don't actually store many details server side so and this is you know in the in the process of having built out e-commerce um you know custom e-commerce sites say within the last five years uh, my approach to it has has changed particularly now that i'm implementing more uh you know the view js as a front-end framework to manage that so things are much cleaner much easier to manage um, that way so now what else you can do is you can come over to the cart here you can see what we have in our cart and you can see our cart total and everything's formatted nicely in such a way that uh, it's very clear and if anything changes in here our cart total will change of course when we come back so for example if i want to add a couple there then i want to go back to the cart you can see the price has changed the item is added uh, in there as well there's some other additional things that i left out of here like the ability to delete uh, an item from the cart if you want to delete an item from the cart then you would just remove it until it's gone and then from there you can go over to cart and you can see that it has been removed so this is the project we're going to build out in this it'll probably take us about an hour and a half to two hours but uh, you'll know for sure obviously when uh, this video is posted so a couple little housekeeping things here to get us started uh, in order to do this project we are going to be using the Vue cli to uh, create everything so to find out how to install that, you'll go to cli.vuejs.org. Some of you probably already have this set up, so it's not really a worry. Um, and then this will give us these tools to build here. If you don't have Node.js or you're more of a beginner, uh, maybe you're not used to working with the tooling um, provided, then the first stop you'll want to go to here is Node.js to install Node on your computer. Node will be included with, uh, or NPM will be in, included with Node, and this will give us the ability to basically download the uh, view installer and the view tools like the linters things like that um, that way so once you've done that once you've installed it and everything is good to go then you'll open up a terminal and that's what we'll do here i'm going to open up a terminal okay i'm going to cd into uh, okay and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make a directory here. Oops, so I actually have to make the directory. And we'll just call this view3 uh, shopping cart. Okay. Um, I'll just actually say make directory view3. 
and then I'll see the into view three. And then I'm going to use the view CLI, just like you see here, create a project. After you've done npm install dash g, add view CLI slash CLI. Once that's all installed, then you can actually go and you can create a project using view create um, whatever you want to name your project. So in this case, I will say view create and we'll just say shopping cart. And that's going to go ahead and install, uh, well, it's going to take us to this screen here. Um, I'm going to use, I'll say, uh, manually select features. So we are going to be using view three for this. And there are a couple things I want to add to this uh, right off the bat. You can add this after the fact. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but you could. Uh, so router. So once you're over it, you can you can cycle through with your arrow keys. You're just going to hit the space bar and you hit the space bar again. So we need the view router and view X and CSS preprocessors. I'm going to use SAS for this just to make writing our CSS actually uh, a lot a lot easier um, and we're going to do everything kind of based on the component so if you're coming from say react this idea should already be familiar with you uh, react and their ecosystem they have a lot of different uh, ways they can go about it okay so once you've selected those then you hit enter and we're going to go three and uh, use history mode for router i'm going to say yes in this case and I'm going to say SAS SCSS with node SAS. Okay. And I'll just say yes, lint with error prevention only. Okay. And we'll say, um, yeah, lint on save. Sure. Uh, and dedicated JSON. We'll, we'll just leave that in the regular package.json file. Save this preset for future projects. I'm going to hit no in this case. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to install that for us. All right. So in the meantime, uh, once once that has finished installing for us, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to cd into the directory and we're going to then open up our uh, web browser, our um, editor. So I use uh, VS Code. A lot of the industry uses VS Code. It's versatile. It's for doing obviously more than working with uh, more than one uh, type of language, and since it's open source and community driven. We get some nice little plugins that uh, that help us along the way here. So. All right, so as soon as this is installed, we will continue. All right, perfect. So we've done that. If we run DIR, we can see we have shopping cart in there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to CD into shopping cart. All right, and then from here, I'm going to open up my code editor by going code dot. You can find this file and folder, depending on the editor that you're using, you can of course just go open folder and then access it that way. And then from here, I'll hit enter. That's going to open up a new window for me. I'm going to close this out. I don't need this anymore. Okay. And on my other side here, I'm just going to cancel the, uh, how it's actually serving it. We'll go ahead. We'll make this a little bit larger so that you can see a little easier. Um, I'll close this initial one, but you can see we're left here with our initial, um, our initial directory. Don't worry about any of these warning messages. Sometimes I have things configured for development and depending on what I'm working on, I might throw little errors here and there, but that's not important. So, all right. So to start with, um, what we can do is we can run NPM serve and we'll see what we have here. So NPM run serve. Okay. And starting our development server. And this initially will just take a moment. And we'll come back here. And basically, it's going to serve up on localhost 8080. Yours should be the same. So when we're looking at this, we can see basically what is scaffolded over for us right from the beginning, or installed right from the beginning with um, with that. So from here, we're going to go ahead. We're going to start modifying um, some things about this. I'll close this window out. We don't really need that window for now, um, and we'll leave it as is. So to understand the direct the the structure of the directory, we can see here we actually have two main view files. We have one for about and one for home. These are the individual components. Don't worry about that message there. Um, and we're going to go ahead. We're going to kind of rip everything out here. Uh, but I just want to give you a, a quick view of, of everything in here. So we have our store. This is where our store is uh, going to be stored, <laughs> uh, where we can access our state um, at any given moment uh, of the application. We can run various mutations, actions, whatever the case might be we need to do there. And this is where our router is located. 
So this might be familiar to you if you're used to working with View and View Router. Um, and here, I'm not going to work so much off of name um, in, in these. I'm just going to do the path because it's really simple. And I don't, uh, just for the simplicity of what's written on the line, to avoid clutter. Right. So we'll make this look good this way. I'm going to rip this out entirely. We'll probably end up throwing some kind of an error, I would imagine. Okay, maybe not. But uh, if we go back out to here, and if I click on about, you can see uh, it returns nothing. So I'm not returning any kind of a component uh, or anything in here. So, all right. Um, and then in here is where we can store our, uh, our individual components. We're obviously not going to use the hello world component. The hello world component, you can see, um, is, is what we have here. So uh, is, is everything that's displaying here with the logo uh, and everything. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's start here in our app.view file. Here you can see we have our uh, router links that are installed, and this is what's actually producing the router view. So basically, if we come over here to router index.php, this home component uh, is, is rendered right here. So there's a few little things I definitely want to change uh, in here as to how things look and feel uh, for the site. Like I don't want it to look like uh, what is what is uh, and what is initially put up here when we install view when we install um, yeah uh, this particular view project so there's definitely some things that I want to remove from there now we are going to use uh, lang CSS make sure that this is on top of every uh, style portion of the components that you um, that we end up creating this will cause some confusion when I was actually building this out I was wondering why things wouldn't work as they were nested and I realized it's because I had not specified that we're using the preprocessor of CSS in this one. So, uh, sorry, uh, SAS in this one. Okay. So to start with, we're just going to do kind of some housekeeping things here. Um, HTML and body. We'll make some modifications here. Okay. Now I'm not using it. Now typically my projects, I'll often use a framework. And to be honest with you, I'm looking to switch over to Tailwind CSS, but I'm just finding that, like, Right now, because I don't have a full grasp on uh, the ecosystem and how that all goes down um, and the common utilities and, and whatever, um, I'm not, I haven't really made the switch yet. And actually, I'm kind of moving more towards just building up my own components uh, using regular, regular old CSS. So, um, and, uh, you know, uh, with a precompiler. Okay. So these things, not really important in terms of uh, building out our, actually, our actual project and seeing how everything functions together with the store and the router and all that. But again, this is kind of a housekeeping thing. So we'll say RGB and we'll say 245, 245, and 245. Okay, close that off. And then down here, we're going to work on our actual nav elements. Um, and, and as they are nested. Now, there's nothing we're going to have to change up here for now, except for when we create the active class so that we know which page we're actually viewing. Um, but for now, we'll say hashtag nav uh, because it is an ID that we're targeting in here. We're going to give this padding of 10 pixels. All right, a width of 100%, a height of 30 pixels. Um, background color uh, of white. Okay, and we'll give it a. We'll make sure that we set the line height so we can center our actual line uh, within that 230 pixels as well. Okay, we'll start nesting some uh, of the elements that sit in there. So when I do an A, actually, what router link is is it is the anchor element uh, that goes in here. So essentially by putting A, we are styling this particular element um, that way. So we could also specify class, but in this case, uh, we're not going to because we're building things with the CSS out as a component, um, which depending on how you look at it has its advantages and its drawbacks. But okay, our font weight, we want it to be bold. Um, color, we'll just do something available to us. 
uh, simply text decoration because these are links so they automatically have um, the underline on them we'll go none and margin uh, zero five pixels zero five pixels in here font size uh, 1.25 rim your device might vary I don't know um, and we'll do and active so if this element has the class of active then we're going to change up a few things particularly the color of the anchor tag so in this case we'll do uh, hash 2c3 e50 all right okay and we're just going to create a simple little utility class in here normally i would put my utility classes in some kind of a separate css file but we're going to do this here for uh just to make things easy okay text dash align equals center so this will be available to us i don't know if i need it in this file or if i need it in another one um okay so up here there's a there's a couple little changes i want to make and you'll see how that all goes down in a moment but here we want to uh, bind a class to it and the class has to be it's going to be active and it's only going to show if route.name equals uh, home actually you know what we need to go back we need to make sure that this does say home okay all right so make sure that that's done that you actually have the route name in there we could also just do path like we could say route.path equals 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 and then put the forward slash and it would be all the same in here we're not going to have cart and we're not going to have about you can delete that file if you want to but i'm going to leave it for now just for the sake of uh, building this and not having to do too much housekeeping uh, initially okay and we'll we'll end up creating the cart component um, at some point here but in the meantime if we go back to our page uh, and I see that so you can see things have changed up here oh let's remove this this pipe okay yeah there you go so you can see it's removed okay so I go to about it will show about oh you know what yeah cart and cart okay because I don't because the route isn't necessarily named uh, for this yet so we can actually go ahead we can create a cart component it's just going to be a an empty component for now okay and we'll put this in the same uh directory oops not view uh, i'm not going to save yet not until i create it otherwise it'll throw some errors and well that's not a big deal um it's something i'm thinking about okay uh, I can use about.view and change the name and stuff. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to go cart.view. And we'll say template. Now, the way I have my stuff, you know, I'm still working on projects in, in view 2 that I haven't upgraded to view 3 yet. Um, you don't necessarily have to have this component in here now. It could just be template. But as you see it sitting right now, this is the way it'll be. So we'll say this is uh, the cart page. All right and in here let's add that now okay um if you're short code for vs code i go shift alt down arrow that copies the line that the cursor is sitting on um and it allows us to do things so okay cart and we'll say cart and let's go ahead and save that we can see we don't throw any errors if we come back here this is the cart page let's change that from where it says about to cart okay and now that active class you can see affects it in such a way that this becomes dark um, when that's done okay let's go to our home component uh, let's get rid of hello world let's get rid of all this um, let's get rid of this and let's take this out of our components here okay and probably from here there's a there's a few things we need to think of in terms of our setup i'm going to go ahead and add the additional items we need here the additional methods and whatnot that we need for this but we're going to need to return a list of items now just to 
break our application out, typically what I would do, because I'm going to be requesting the items from a server, I'm probably going to interface with Axios or Fetch or something like that uh, to make that AJAX call. In here, however, what we'll do is we'll just include uh, the file as, as a separate uh, JavaScript file with an array uh, of items that are in there. Okay, so we'll start by going import items from, and I'm going to go ahead and create this here, data items.js. Okay, now we can go ahead, you see I threw an error. Uh, we can go ahead and we first of all need to create um, the data structure, a data folder. So we'll say data slash items.js. Okay. And then in here, uh, all we really need to do is uh, export those uh, particular items in there. So the way we do that is we'll go const items equals, sorry, no, it needs to be an array. So square, square brackets instead. Um, I don't want to get, I wonder how I can do this for you guys. I could put this up in my GitHub profile, but I suppose... If this is on my GitHub profile, um, those that aren't used to working with uh, Git won't necessarily know how to navigate it. But for now, uh, export default items, and we'll just create uh, our items in here. You could play around with this yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'll create an item that has an ID of one. Uh, name, we'll give it a specific name. You guys can add whatever you want in here. Uh, in this case, this one's called Comfy Slippers. Okay. Um, and price, all right, and we'll say $12 for that, or 12 of whatever currency. We'll go category footwear. We'll give it a category. This will give you the option in, down the road to then start filtering your results. Uh, it depends how far you want to go with this, right? And then in here, we're just going to put some lorem ipsum. Okay. Uh, let's see here. This has to be wrapped in um, quotes, of course. How does that look? Okay, that looks much better. So that's that's how this is all going to look. You'll want to give yourself some some good lorem ipsum. Um, my recommendation is like just go to the lorem ipsum generator. Um, or you can do like I did. And you can uh, just type in lorem, and then it's and then it's in there. Uh, then, sorry, push lorem, and then push tab or enter, um, and then just make sure you then wrap it in quotes uh, that way. So, okay. So from here on out, I'm just going to copy and paste the other items that I have, um, just to save me some time here on the actual video. And I will give you the link uh, in the notes as to the repository and specifically where you can find this particular file in order to just copy and paste it over okay so now we'll go back to home here we'll, we'll go save again um, so because we have no unused vars set uh, in our babel configuration um, we it's, it's not compiling properly so what we'll do here right now is we'll just return items and we'll use the file up here items and you can see once it's uh, you know visible like this then uh, it's it's very usable um, in there Okay, so that's how that's going to start out. Okay, now probably what we want to do is then show a list of our items. Um, so in order to, to show this list that we have created, uh, we're going to create a separate component called a product summary card. We'll, we'll call it a product summary card component. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in a container um, I'm going to call this product dash cards dash uh, container. Okay. And let's see here. Uh, and then we'll give this st uh, stuff some cl uh, classes. So we'll go style. We need to enter in lang equals scss. Okay. And then um, dot product dash cards dash container and here there's only about three different lines here so we do want this to be we do want to use flex um, and then flex we definitely do want it to wrap and we're going to give our elements some specific widths um, 
so that flex knows when to wrap and uh, justify content uh, center. And we want that so that everything is in the center and looks well well organized. So that's it. We're not going to touch uh, this component in regards to style um, any any further. But what we do need to do is we do need to create a component um, for that. So what we'll do is we'll create a product summary card component. Uh, I'm going to enter that in up here first, even though we haven't created the file. But we'll say product summary card and we'll import that from uh, forward slash components uh, products uh, product uh, summary card okay if i hit save obviously we're going to throw an error because that doesn't exist so let's go to components we'll say new file uh, we'll say products slash uh, product summary card dot view. Okay, perfect. So that's how that looks uh, there for us. Okay, so now that we've created that, let's go back to our home view. We can now save this. We're going to throw the no unused vars error in there. And so what we need to do is in our components, we need to register uh, this product summary card. And now we can actually use it uh, in here. Now, the way I like to build out my components is I like to think about the data that I'm going to have to pass to it first and foremost. So we're going to need to pass the um, we're going to need to pass uh, a, a few bits of data to this. So one is going to be the items, and we'll have to loop through all the items in order to produce an instance of each of these cards. Um, we'll want to bind it with a key, which in this case we're just going to use, we could use the ID or we could use the index. Uh, in this case, to keep things simple, I'll just use the ID, so because uh, each one does have a unique ID. And we need to pass through the individual item, which as we pass it through the product summary card, we're going to uh, actually call it product instead of item. As a name and convention, you could change all of this around to products, products, and then this down here to products, products, and then to put um, the bind the individual product. And then once we want to actually view the product, which we'll get into a little bit later, um, then we'll have to create some kind of an event listener that goes in uh, when we click on that particular product to show it, like you saw in that one particular drawer that slides out uh, uh, at the beginning of this um, at the beginning of this tutorial. So for now, let's go through here. We'll say v4 uh, equals and we'll say um, we can say item. Or let's say product in item in items. Um, and then we'll for the key we will say um, product dot id because if you go back here to our items, each item has a unique id, so it's appropriate to use that. We could also pass in the name or something, but I don't really see the point. Um, in this particular instance so we will do it that way uh, product we're going to bind so that our component can actually use this uh, as a prop and we'll say product in here and we won't register our listener yet we'll do that down the road when we actually create the methods to handle what we're going to do all right so uh, we'll go back to our product summary card now and we need to make sure that we're actually bringing in this particular um, product you know at the very least we can show the product name uh, probably add a few classes in here as well uh, to to manage all of that so so we'll say script we need to open up a script tag and we need to go export default okay and then we need to go props and we'll say product and we're going to need to run, we're going to need to have a computed property in here as well. For now, I'm not going to worry about that so much. Um, we'll create a class here. We'll, we'll take a look at what it looks like before I actually start, you know, adding CSS to these classes. Um, but to start with, we'll say is we'll put an H3 in there. Um, we'll pass the product name through. That's going to be important. And we'll do an H5 and I'm going to give this one a class of price uh, just for the purpose of being able to style this. We'll say price 
And I'm going to go ahead, add a dollar sign there, two curly braces, and we'll say product dot price dot two fixed. Just to make sure that we're always showing double digits. Okay. Uh, down from there, we're going to need a place to just show the, show the description that we created, all that lorem ipsum. So in this case, I'm going to say description. That's what I'll call this class. And we'll go description. Uh, description. Okay, so why am I doing it like this? Well, we have to create a computed property um, for this. So this is going to take uh, our prop, and we're going to call this one description. Okay, and we're just going to return this, referring to this current element, product. So referring to our prop here, a product. And we'll go description, and we'll just do substring uh, 0 and 150. Okay, now I could do this in line. That would be an option. Um, better practice is to put this here, and because of how long this actually looks, that's another reason I do want to put this uh, here. Sometimes if I'm dealing with data, uh, you know, typed data, so something that needs to remain an integer or something, then often I'll pass it through as a computer property and then turn it into a string uh, up in here. That's a personal preference. There's no real performance hit or anything doing it that way. Um, it's, it still evaluates just fine when that's created. Okay, so P in here, we'll again add another class. And we'll make this one. This is where we're going to put our um, our product category. So we'll have to create that class or text muted. So we don't want it to be, you know, vibrant black. We want it to be kind of grayed out to give us kind of an easier uh, look and feel to it. Um, and then we're going to need to put in a button in here to actually view the product. So we'll give this button a class of view dash product. Uh, dash button. Okay, and we'll create those classes here at the bottom after we have a look at um, what we need to have a look at. Okay, so view. Now let's go ahead and go back out to our project in here. Uh, we'll hit refresh. Something is going on. Don't know what it is. I don't see any errors being thrown there. So, um, oh, you know what? You can see here. It's not saving properly. Let's go home. We'll do this. Let's see if that fixed. There you go. Okay, so now we see it uh, in there. Now, I don't think... Okay, so every time I try to save this file, it's not... You can see it's not recompiling it here. Uh, I'd have to go to home and then recompile from there. So in this case, what I do, if, that, if you ever run into that and you're wondering, why isn't this updating? What did I do so wrong? Which you'll run into particularly uh, when you're getting started. Um, then all you do, control C, command C if you're on a Mac, terminate batch job shirt, and then go npm run serve again. It'll compile everything. Perfect. Now every time I hit save on here, you can see that it actually saves as it should. So we can see we have all of our data printing out. This is great stuff. Um, and here we have our button, but it doesn't look as pretty as uh, what was initially shown Um to you in there. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's actually, here, just a little housekeeping thing. Okay. Let's go ahead. Uh, we'll go back to our editor and let's add some classes here uh, for us. So style, and it needs to be, lang needs to be equal to SCSS. So this is shorthand using Emmet. Uh, before you see that I added it manually, I just wanted to make you aware of that if you're using VS Code. Okay, so we need to come up with a card class. Uh, the card class is going to have a width of 80%, and this is going to we're going to have some media queries in here as well for width. So when we do go up to a larger screen, then you know it's not going to go 80%. It'll kind of go in line, and then we'll have a very fixed width uh, in terms of that way. So margin, we're going to put 10% all the way around. Uh, padding is going to be 10 pixels. Um, the border radius. Uh, is going to be, we'll say, five pixels. Okay, let's go background color. Background color for our card will be white. And we'll say box shadow. 
We'll give it some box shadow here. And we'll say zero, zero. This is kind of going to give us a little highlighted border. Um, and just to give it so it just pops a little bit the card. All right, within here we have an H5 with a class of price. Okay, I mean, I could target the H5 with like first child or something, but we'll do it this way. Color gray, so that no matter what modifications we make to this, uh, we don't have to worry about really breaking anything down the way. Uh, for, for the description, we'll say font size, we'll, we'll um, decrease that to 0.85 rem. Rem is just going to be based on what they have preset for their device and then how things are typically scaled up or down uh, from there. And then text-muted. And here we will have a color of gray. Okay, perfect. Now we need to style our button. So that would be uh, this item right here. And we could we could style that. Okay, so do dot card. I'll style the button from within here. And we'll say button dot view dash uh, product dash button. Okay. And we need to add a little bit of padding in there of 10 pixels. Uh, background color is going to be RGB. Um, 79, 160, 187. All right. Uh, border, none. Color, white. Uh, that's, that's our text color. Our font weight, I want it to be bold. So we'll do that. Oops. Font weight bold. Um, font size. We'll make this a little bit larger. We'll say 1.15 RAM. Of course, when I built this out initially, uh, for the purpose of doing this, you know, I chose at that point how I want it to look. If you guys think I'm doing this off the top of my head, no. <laughs> no, I, I built this out. I flushed it out so that I could give you guys a better experience. I know a lot of projects I do and share on YouTube here, uh, I often just kind of, um, I don't want to say wing it. Like I have an idea because I've built out a number of them before. Uh, but I think this will give you kind of a better quality experience with everything. So with the whole tutorial. So let's create one media query in here. Um, we'll say min-width of 500 pixels. Sounds fair enough. And we're going to target the card element. And we're going to give it some fixed widths and some fixed margins. Okay. So we'll say width of 350 pixels. And we'll say margin uh, of 10 pixels. Okay. And if we go back here, let's see what we have. Let's refresh. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so you can see we style our cards. Everything looks pretty decent in here. Um, okay. The Typically, like, you know, the last small phone I had for a smartphone was the iPhone. I think that goes down to the iPhone 5. And I think that goes down to, like, 300 and 370 or something as a preset in pixels for width. So that's really the smallest viewport size that you'd be viewing it from. But let's come just before our breakpoint in here. Okay, and we'll leave it at that for now. All right, so that looks good to me in there. Okay, so I want to handle something in here. Now Now we've got our product summary card displaying. That's great. Every time somebody clicks this button, though, I do want to um, fire off uh, a particular event. So uh, I don't have to do prevent. I mean, typically on projects, I do put prevent just in case somebody hard-coded a a form tag or something in there. Um, so I'm just going to go add click in this case. So this causes some problems. We can easily uh, we can easily trouble troubleshoot that. Okay. Product. Okay. And then we need to pass through our actual product that we passed through initially, so we know what we're dealing with. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, we have no real way to Pick, pick anything up um, from our parent component. So let's go ahead and add that in here now. So we want to say v on, uh, what did we put down there? v on view dash product, dash product equals, um, 
uh, let me just pull this up here. Uh, we'll we'll create a method of view product. We don't necessarily have to put in uh, run the event through here. We could just leave this blank as well. But we are but we are essentially passing through the event that was fired off. So we can access that event tag uh, like so. Now what we need to do is we need to create a method to handle that. Um, uh, so we'll say method, sorry, methods. Okay, and then we can create our method in here. So we put view product as our method. So we'll say view product. We need to pass through the product in this case. And we're going to add a particular item in here uh, called product. We will leave it null initially once it loads up. And uh, what we'll do is we'll basically just assign this dot product equal to product which is passed through and this is how we're going to know that it's the current product that we clicked because we put it within that item so um, now what we need to think of doing is actually building out a drawer so every single time we click on this we want our little drawer to come out um, hold on I want to go back to our product summary card here and I just want to put view product because it's just kind of weird to have just view written up there okay Great, that looks that looks fine. It looks decent. Nothing fancy. Um, told you that at the outset. So, <laughs> all right. So for now, we'll leave that as such. I don't think we actually need to even revisit that particular one. But let's uh, console log um, this dot product so that we can be sure that you know everything is working properly. So we have console here. Click on this. Yep, yeah, perfect. We can see everything comes through, all of the details for that particular product. We click this one, that one comes through. We click that one, that one comes through. So on and so forth. Okay, so now, now we can actually pass data that we want to manipulate through to other components in here. So this view product component, what we actually want to do is we want to create that drawer that we saw uh, earlier. So let's go ahead and we'll create that particular drawer component. We'll say import. Um, product description drawer from components products and we'll say product oops description drawer dot view okay it doesn't exist so of course that's going to throw an error we can take this opportunity, of course, to register the component for use. Um, now let's go to product. So components, products, product description drawer. Dot view. Okay. Template. So what we can now do is, yeah, we can go ahead and we can actually uh, start building this uh, particular thing out. So we have our template in here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this kind of root component, what well, would have been the root container from before. Oh, let's go back to our home page here. What's going on? Has been registered but not used. Product description drawer. Okay. Let's see if, let me put this here on the page. Product description drawer. Um, do we need to pass anything into it? Uh, I mean, yeah, we do. We need to kind of pass through. Well, we need to pass through two items. One, we need to pass through the product. Uh, the product. So product, product. So that's going to pull from here. So right now it's null unless we click on something, and then it will actually be assigned that particular product that uh, has been picked. And we'll need to um, within this component. What else do we need to add to it? Oh, yeah, basically, if the component is active or, uh, you know, basically, if the component should uh, show at that particular moment. So we can say, we can actually pass this class through. So when we actually go to create our CSS, we will, we will pass the particular state of this component, of that particular class, what class it is, we'll bind the class from a prop that will pass through so that we can kind of control this on more of the the root of the parent element down here so this is going to be active and this will be equal to 
um, active. So down here we'll need to add uh, active, sorry, not active, it needs to be active dot um, product underscore drawer. Okay. So this is typically the way I will set up whether things are active or not. So I have active uh, product drawer. Uh, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create another object. We'll call, we'll call this the active object and product um, underscore drawer. And for now, that'll be set to false. So every time the page loads up, we're not going to see uh, that drawer. Okay, it says the template requires a child element. Okay, that doesn't have a child element right now. But you know what? We can easily uh, create one for ourselves in there. Um, all right, where am I at here? Okay. So let's go ahead. We'll, we'll go back to the product drawer component um product, product drawer here uh we'll say we'll make it a div uh, we'll give it a class uh equal to uh drawer dash background so this is going to be basically like the gray background a background that you can also click on um to show uh, to 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 hide the model as well but that has to be built as a sibling it cannot be built as uh the parent element that then holds the the slide out because uh, then basically when you handle the on click event if you click anywhere within that container even if it's a child container then it's gonna disappear we don't want that and you'll see what I mean here momentarily um, we'll call this class show and this will show if we have active dot uh, product uh, underscore drawer Okay, so I did this a little bit differently. For now, I'm going to leave it like active like this um, because that's what we passed through um, in our component here. So we're passing this prop through, which is um, basically this data element here. Okay, this data here. Okay, so that's uh, done there. And then what we're going to want to do is handle uh, an on-click event. So this one is going to close the modal, or not, sorry, not the modal. It's going to close the drawer once it's clicked. Uh, hold on, hold on. Close. Product drawer, we can do it like this as well. It doesn't really matter per se. So, and then we'll do a forward slash there to close that off now. Okay, good. So everything compiles successfully now. Um, we can initially what we'll do, we won't necessarily add the product details in here yet, but let's create another div and we'll give this a class of drawer. Okay. And then we only want this one to show again if. um if we're actually you know active right okay perfect now we need to create a uh, a way to close uh, our drawer not just not only by clicking the 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 drawer background but also we want to kind of give them an x to actually click as well so in this case we'll create another div with a class of drawer dash close in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and just place the X in there. Okay, and then from here, every time we click this one, we want, again, to call this. We want to emit this event to our parent component. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, we'll say, we'll then create a div. Uh, I only want this div to appear if we actually have a product that is not null. So only if we have the actual product do I want it to appear. I'm going to give this a class of product dash details so we can uh, style that down down the way. And we'll create an H3. Uh, we'll give this H3 a class equal to text dash center. Okay. And uh, accepting the product that we pass through, we want to display here the name of the product. Let's, just for testing purposes, well, not just for testing purposes, but just for the purposes 
um, of not throwing errors when we actually view the front of it. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have those props added in here. So in here we could say, we'll just say product. Okay. So now that's passed through, so we should be able to start seeing this. Uh, and we're going to do a paragraph with a class of description in here. And we'll say product.description. Okay. And then we'll go, to, we'll create another H3 uh, with a class of text center. So you saw we already created that utility class um, on our main app component. Uh, but in here we'll pass through, this is where we're going to put in our actual price of the product. Okay. So product dot price dot two fixed. We'll do two in there. All right. And then um, we'll create another div with, uh, we'll say cart dash total. Okay. And we only want this cart total to appear if we have a product total. Um, let's see here. Product underscore total. Because what we're, yeah. Just because. <laughs> Um, we'll do an H3 and we'll say in cart and in here we'll put an H4 and we'll put uh, product, we could say total, probably what I should use here is like product count um, or item count or something. I'll leave it as is. Okay, and then we're going to need uh, two buttons, one to add and one to subtract. Uh, so to start with we'll create a button container. Um, and if you're familiar with CSS, you might know why I'm breaking things out the way I am already. If you don't, just bear with me and you'll see as we move along uh, why that is. Okay, so we have a class of remove and we're going to have a class of uh, add. And we'll style those ones um, independently. I don't even know if we actually need to add the, the remove of the class. One other thing here, we do need to add, we do need to bring, make this prop accessible. A product um, active okay let's uh, add our text in here so we'll say remove and then we'll say add okay and then um, that should be about it there all right so from here we can start styling actually no <laughs> hold on uh, you're going to create a computer property here because we, we are displaying a computer property here of product total. So let's go ahead and we'll say product total. And for now, we're just going to, we'll just return 56.00. Okay. We'll actually return something proper, um, a little bit later, a little bit later on. Okay. So let's go ahead, create another, st uh, a style tag. And again, shorthand, I'm going to set len equal to scss. Okay, so first thing we need to style is our drawer background. And we can style that, we'll say a width of 100%. So it needs to take up the whole screen, right? A height of 100 VH, so viewport height. And we need to give it a position of fixed so that we can then manipulate it with the top and the bottom right, left, whatever we need to manipulate it with. In this case, we're going to just align it to the left and make sure it's tight up to the top. All right. And then we'll go background dash color. Um, could just do like light gray, but I think I, I had actually found uh, something I liked a little bit better. And that was one, two, four. 124, 124 with an opacity of 0 0.55. Okay. Perfect. And you can see that's the color that we are aiming for with opacity because we kind of want to see hazy in the background um, the rest of the items. We'll give this a Z index of 100, meaning um, as it goes down, that's the priority that will be given. So it will always appear on top of um, everything except for the actual uh the in, in except for the actual drawer with the white background that we want to display uh initially we just want to set display equal to none 
Uh, what mistake did I make here? Okay, Wilson tactical error. Okay, and then we do want to handle a transition um, of display. I don't actually know if display has a transition. Anyways, not a big deal. We'll find out, right? Um, if an element has this class as well, so if these classes are put together, that's why I use the and sign, uh, then we want our display to be block. All right. Okay, so that works for the drawer background right now. Um, we'll go ahead and you're not really going to see, I wonder actually, you know what, it might be better in this situation to, well, we can just set this to true for now as we go to test this out. Okay, we're not going to notice the transitions in particular, but you'll see here, okay, this is what it looks like um, for the for for our background in here we have no data being shown in here after we click it like you saw in the initial example but now we basically have to draw the white drawer uh full page width and then it needs to come in and out and we'll see that in action afterwards but as i'm building out the styles here you'll kind of see what it is that we've actually uh, gone ahead and affected uh so we'll do uh so we already created uh dot and show and let's go and say dot drawer. Okay, so we'll start styling our actual drawer and we'll say it needs to have a width of, we'll say 95 viewport width. Okay, and I, do, I don't remember if I put any media queries on this. Yeah, there's one media query. So this is gonna change uh, um, after it you know reaches a certain size, which will be 500 pixels. Um, it won't go past uh, a fixed uh, width. All right, so we want a border. Um, no, sorry, we don't want a border. Uh, not in this case. We want a drawer. So with the width of 95 viewport width, height, 100 viewport height, okay background color we want that to be white uh, position again we need this one to be fixed so that we can control its actual position based on the page top of zero um, left initially we want it to be negative 105 viewport width so basically it's going to hide off to the left of our screen Okay. Um, padding, we'll say 15 pixels in here. And uh, transition, we want to basically set our transition here for left. And we'll say 0.5 seconds. And a Z index, we want to give it as 101. So if you remember up here, we put Z index 100. We want this one to sit on top of. Uh, our drawer background. So that's why we have to put 101. It's one position above that, right? And then uh, any overflow on the Y axis, so going up and down, uh, we want them to be able to scroll in case the content is long or the phone is short or whatever the case, combination of both. Okay, we'll do and show. So if drawer and show at the same time, are there, then we'll say a left of zero. We want the left-hand side to be zero instead of negative 105. All right, okay, so far so good. Now, what I wanna do is, let's see here. Actually, let's see how things look right now on our actual page. Okay, well that's not showing, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, because it is height, top position, control, whatever. Okay. Let's continue down nonetheless. So we'll go dot drawer dash close. Uh, font size, we want it to be 1.5 rem. Okay. Uh, padding. Uh, five pixels, uh, border radius, um, five pixels, 
So this is for the actual X that closes it out, right? Uh, right, we want it to be 10 pixels. Oops. It's not the right way to spell right. Border, um, I want to do 2 pixels. Solid, uh, gray. Uh, and then the color of the text in there will be gray. Um, as well, and we'll give this a width of 15 pixels, uh, and then we want it to float right, sorry, float right in there. Okay, great. And then cursor, uh, we'll set as pointer so that when we're actually hovering over it, we see a little hand pop up so that, we, so that it appears that it could be closed. Um, when when you hover over this element, we want the background color to change, and that background color will be light gray. All right, fair enough. Good. Okay, now let's go style some of our product details. And I don't know why that's not showing. Let's. Uh, I'm going to go back to our home component here. I'm just going to set this to false. And I'll see if there's any debugging I have to do or find out why it is it's not um, not showing already. But we'll say product details. Display is going to be flex. Uh, justify content is going to be center. Um, flex direction. Uh, is going to be column. Okay, well, bang it. Um, and then we need to add a description uh, for the paragraph tag. So padding on this one, we're going to make it 20 pixels. And the line height, we will make 1.5 rem. So we have some nice, decent spacing in there, right? Uh, button container. Okay, the button within the container, each button will be a width of 150 pixels. A border of none, no border. Uh, padding, I want to do 10 pixels in there. Uh, border radius, I want to do 5 pixels. And then the margin, we do want to set the margin, so we'll say 0, 5 pixels, 50 pixels, 5 pixels. Okay. Um, and then again, cursor, pointer. Just to make it a little more obvious that that's what we click when we're hovering over with our mouse. All right. And now what we need to do is just add a uh, single media query. in here so min dash width uh, is going to be 500 pixels just like our other one and then on dot drawer uh, we're going to want to give it a width a fixed width at that point of 450 pixels just so it doesn't go too too big okay let's go ahead and hook this up in our home controller so that we can actually toggle whether or not um, this particular one is visible with our active dot product underscore drawer. So right now it shows us false. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll say view product. And then we need to set this dot active uh, dot product drawer equal to true. Okay. Now let's go back out here. Nothing is happening here. I don't know why that's not showing. Because it really should show, you know. Um, okay, so if you're wondering why that wasn't working for me, uh, up here I put show instead of class. <laughs> okay. Simple mistake to make, I suppose. Let's go ahead now and click that, see what happens. Awesome. Deadly. And if we open that up even further, we can see that. Uh, it doesn't open up past a certain point. All right, great. Okay, so that's there. 
This shows 56 in the card. So that should actually be a whole number. It shouldn't be like a decimal uh, place in there. So just for the sake of this, let's just say, we'll just put five for now. Once we actually start working with our view store uh, with, with view X, then that's where we'll end up pulling in the product total for that particular product, that particular item that we have in the cart um, that way. And that's where a lot of our backend or data driven work is going to uh, happen, which would make sense because that's where our data is stored. So, um, okay, so we got that done. Um, now, I mean, there's some, some other things we could do here, like we could start working on our data store uh, to pull in um, data like that for the product total. So we, we could do it that way. Um, there's, I'm just trying to think another way we could go about this too. Cause it, cause the main place where we, where we pull our data from and we interact with our data is going to be here. Actually where we interact with our data is going to be almost exclusively here in the product description drawer where we add or remove the product. Then over in the cart page, that's where we're going to have, uh, that's where we're going to have the, um, you know, the details, right? That's where we're going to do all our math to tell them what everything totals up to create a list, uh, so on and so forth. So let's, let's move out to, I'm just going to close every other one. We'll say, well, let's, let's test out one more thing just so you can see this working in action. Does that close? No, that doesn't close. So that's one thing we need to hook up here. So we would have over on product description drawer, we would have admitted the event close product drawer. Let's go to home and we'll say over here, V on. Place that in there. Um, and then what we want to do in there is just close the product drawer. So we could call close product drawer. That would be an option for us to do there. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that particular method. Close product drawer. And if you guessed it, uh, that's as simple as turning this to false. So we'll say this dot active dot product drawer equals false. Okay. So now that's closed. It opens, it closes, it opens, it closes. If it's wider, okay, like this, it opens, we click here, it closes. Okay. We click here, it does not close. These buttons don't do anything for us either at the moment. So, all right, I'm going to go back to our mobile view, 496. It's good enough for me. I'm not that OCD. So, all right. So let's go ahead and we'll start working on our uh, actual store. All right. So let's go to our store in here, index.js. And this is where we'll start playing uh, with things. Now I am, I'm particularly, I, I don't like big files uh, unless it's like an HTML page. I mean, but even then, you know, I break things out. You know, and the whole point of having view is, is to break things out in terms of your components, so on and so forth. So our store is going to have, you know, a couple different uh, properties within the state. Um, we're going to have a few different mutations for a few different uh, reasons and yeah, so, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and we'll start playing uh, with, with the store here. So first of all, I want to create, I want the ability for us to be able to, when we add things to actually update uh, the local storage. So I could do this by, I can create a function right in here uh, called update local storage. Uh, and the, all that I'm going to pass through here is the actual cart. Um, so when I pass through the cart, I'm just going to set the item uh, from our store, from the state in our store. It's going to be called cart and we'll say JSON dot stringify the cart um, uh, data attribute that's brought through. Uh, in our state, we are going to have a cart, which is going to be represented by an array, an array of objects. And we're going to have some getters and we're going to have some mutators, so on and so forth. So, so first things first, probably what we want to do is be able to add, um, for the getters, we probably want to be able to see uh, the product quantity in question. So we'll, we'll start by actually making uh, that particular getter. Uh, we'll pass through state and then we'll pass through our product this way. And then in here, basically item uh, will be represented by 
state.cart.find because we're going to be basically going through. So this is a higher order array function in JavaScript. We're going to go through our cart and we're going to find an object uh, that matches this. So we'll say i equals i.id. If that equals product.id, which we passed through in here, then we want to assign that to item. So if we found item, so we'll say if item, if it doesn't return null, then what we want to do is we want to return item.quantity. Now, this quantity is going to come from uh, a mutation that we create so that we can actually add that to our state um, in there. Okay. Oh, not that. Um, and else, we just want to return null in that case. Okay. Um, update local storage. That's fine. We're going to do a few more things in here before we actually... I do anything. And you know, this is a getter. So my apologies. We need to create an additional uh, getters here. Okay, we'll just cut and paste that down there. And then in mutations, what we're going to do is we'll say add to cart. And we'll say state and product um, that will end up passing through in order to add it. We'll say let item equal uh, state dot cart dot find um, all right so as long as basically again we're, we're searching through the through the array of um, cart objects of items in the cart basically and we're looking for this particular product ID so if that's the case then we should have an item so if item what we want to do is we'll say item dot quantity Plus plus. So basically what's happening here is we're either adding it to the array or if it's already in the array, uh, I'm talking about this array here for our state. If it's already in here, we want to add to the quantity that's in there, if that makes sense. So we add it by one and we decrement by one as well. Otherwise, we want to create that and put it in to our um into our cart. So we're going to go ahead and push on to that array. We're going to push on a separate object. Now, you can't just put product in here. We actually have to make a copy of it and then put it uh, in here. Otherwise, product is simply referencing that particular product um, out, out of our first list. So, um, and quantity will always be one. I'm going to put, I'm, the reason I'm going to write it uh, like this initially is just because um, it, it's just because, you know, maybe we want to send through, uh, oh no, sorry. The reason I want to write it like this is because obviously when we add it, we've only added a quantity of one to the cart. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. And then what we want to do is we want to say, okay, let's go ahead and let's update local storage, um, with what we have there in the cart. Now, why do we update local storage? Because when the application actually loads next time, if we have things in our cart, so if somebody's returning to their cart, we want them to be able to pick up where they left off. Fair enough? Sounds fair enough to me. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go back to our product description drawer again here. And we can do things like we can pull in uh, the product total um, in here. So let's go ahead. We'll take, we'll take care of our computed property here first. Um, and so all we need to do is we need to access this dot store, um, dot getters dot product quantity. And we'll say this dot product is what we're passing through to be able to find that particular product, right? So it comes in here, product quantity, it goes up to here, it searches through our, our cart array, uh, using state here. And then if we have it, we're going to return the quantity. Otherwise, we're going to return null. Okay. And then up here, yeah, we have product total. And basically, if product total returns null, then nobody's going to see this. They're not going to see this. They won't even see it as zero. It just won't show up unless they've actually added it. So that's why we have that VF there. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to think of adding uh, a product to our cart. So we'll create a, not in computed, we will create uh, a method. We'll create a couple methods here. We'll need one method to add, 
So this one will be called add to cart. And in there, we'll just say this dot store, sorry, dot dollar store dot commit. So this is what we need to add. We use commit, the, the commit um, method in order to access uh, that method we created and to run it. So add to cart. And we need to do this dot product. Okay. Perfect. Add to cart this dot product. Good to go. So let's let's go and see if that part uh, works for us. View product. No. Let's refresh here just in case. Opponent render server. Okay. Let's go back and see what we're dealing with. All right. So that's kind of a silly mistake, actually. We we have to actually. Uh, bind it to the component. So at click equals add to cart. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Kind of a silly move there. All right. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, great. So we can add it here. I'm not going to worry about this too much uh, right now. We'll just leave that as is. Okay. Can't remove yet. So let's go ahead and we'll hook up the mutation for us to actually. Um, remove from the cart so we'll create a method in here which will be remove from cart and we'll kind of do things in reverse here we'll create the method here first and then we'll go to our store and create the method in our store um, so we'll say this dot store dot commit and this is going to be remove from cart and we'll pass through this dot product so that we know what product we need to remove from the cart now in our store uh, under our mutations, we are going to um, add something else here. So this one is probably going to be uh, a little bit longer um, than the other ones. Okay. So remove from cart. Um, pass through our state. That's the first thing that we'll get passed through. And then the product in there. And, and then from here, what we need to do is we need to identify the item. So we need to find the item in the cart. So we'll state, we'll say state dot cart dot find. And basically, if that particular, as we're iterating through it, if that particular item ID equals the product ID, then that will have some kind of a value. So if, and this is kind of a precautionary measure, like those buttons, I don't know. I mean, the buttons will show up. But basically, if somebody clicks on this and the quantity, we only want something to happen. We only want them to be able to remove it if the quantity is greater than uh, is greater than zero. But really, what we want to do is we want to check, first of all, and make sure, okay, does the item exist in the cart? If it exists in the cart, we're going to do something with it. We also want to make sure that we have a quantity uh, greater than one. This is the first case scenario that we're going to deal with, in which case we can actually then subtract because if it's not greater than one um you know so so it'd be two or greater if it's only one then subtracting it removes it from the cart so what we actually want to do is remove that item from the cart period not have it show up with any kind of a value okay and then so when we save it in local storage you know we don't have empty objects in an array or products with empty uh quantity you know with quantities of zero Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So we'll subtract that there. Now, else, so basically, if it's one or less, we want to set the, the value of the cart in the state by using another higher order function of state.cart.filter. So this is basically, um, as long as it meets this particular uh, case, so if it's not equal to product now because we're removing it so if it's not that product then we want it to be in the cart otherwise we want to leave it um you know otherwise we want to remove it from the cart so that's basically how we remove it from the cart um in there now the last bit of housekeeping we want to take care of here is we do want to update local storage and we'll pass through state dot cart to make that happen okay 
Okay, so let's go back. Let's see what's going on here. We have... Okay, let's go back here. Okay, we'll add... Oops. Add, 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 add. And then... Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, last thing. Same mistake I made last time. Um, I have to put the remove from... Remove from cart. Okay. Okay, now you can see that actually works. So we can add or we can remove from the cart. And if we actually view our cart object here, you can see what's going on. We have a quantity of seven. If I add, okay, now we should have a quantity of eight. We can see that our local storage is updating. And if I reset my state in here, you can see, um, you know, we still have the cart stored in here. So now actually when we load up the application, we can pull from local storage um, that way, if that makes sense sense and that should make sense all right and actually you know we can take care of that right now so basically every time we load up uh, our page we want to check local storage to see if a cart is in there and if the cart is in there um, stored in local storage then that's what we want to load in so let's go ahead and do that uh, where we're going to take care of that well we're going to take care of it in two places one we're going to go to our store and we're going to use it as a mutation here okay and we'll call this one update cart from local storage. All right, so let's say state, pass that through. Um, so we'll say cart equals local storage uh, dot get item cart then we want to check okay uh, does cart actually have a value if it does then what we want to do is assign that value to state.cart um, we want to parse that JSON because we stored it as JSON and we'll pass cart through there now we don't want to handle anything else beyond this because you know if there is no cart in there then when we come up here we just want it to be an empty array so that we can then add objects to it. Now the next place that we will load this up in is in our app.view file. And let's create a script. And we'll say export default. And in the mounted method, we will go ahead and, uh, and add that. So we do that as a commit. We'll say this dot store dot commit um, and we'll say update cart from local storage okay so we'll save that now what we'll do is we'll go back to our screen here and we will right now you can see we have eight in the cart so let's go ahead and refresh and let's see if we still have eight yeah we do okay we do a hard refresh. Let's see if that has eight. And yeah, it still does. Okay, close that. We should have six. And you can see perfect. You know, that uh, that still works. We could have multiple items in here. So let's do a few more. So we'll do four here. We'll add a little bit of everything. Big spenders. Okay. Okay, now let's reload. Okay, again, we'll view. Oh, did we not add anything for hikers? Oh, maybe we didn't add anything for hikers. Do we add anything for ski jacket? Yeah, we did. So that persists. We added anything for departure? Yes, we did. So I think it was just hikers I missed. So we'll make sure we have a little bit of something and everything there. <clears throat> okay. All right, deadly. That's awesome. So that works. So there's really nothing else we need to do here. We could test out and make sure that, you know, if we've removed it, we'll say trail runners, <clears throat> that it actually stays deleted. Okay, refresh. Trail runners, yeah, it stays deleted. In this case, so we're going to add two. All right. And then we can start uh, viewing our cart page um, in here. So let's go ahead and we'll start building out the cart page. We'll build the interface and then we'll work with the store. <clears throat> Pardon me, to get all that working. So... Um, so cart.view, 
this is the cart page and we'll go ahead and this one's this one we're gonna have two child components in here so first of all we'll have each one and we'll just say your cart um, and then below that we'll have a cart item card and we'll have some slightly different styles in there from from the other cards that we've done and we're also going to have to put a let's start with the cart item card first and foremost and then we do need to set up a computed property to actually pass those items through so we'll do that next here so we'll say script export default and we'll say computed um, and we'll pass through items or items will be what's passed through and now we have to go to our uh, store and and grab those. So store dot getters dot cart items. So we actually have to go back to our store to make sure that we can return these. For now, let's just uh, just to verify our data is coming through here. We'll say for product in items we really should call it products instead of uh, items but that's okay we'll leave it for now you can change that if you want to it's just kind of a semantic thing so um key is going to be the product dot id and we'll just print out the product name see if we can't return a list of item after item uh that way but we need to go back to our store and we need to, uh, not there, right there. And we need to add uh, that getter. Okay. So cart items. We'll try to take care of our state here. And then we're going to need just that. Okay and really simply we'll just return our cart right state dot items state dot cart not state dot items okay <clears throat> now we can go back and we should receive this and if we go here you can see it's printing out already for us so now all we have to do is create a card uh, to then display that <clears throat> nicely so let's go index store here uh, sorry, not there. Let's go to our cart view in here. And again, we're going to have to import a uh, like a cart item card. So we'll, we'll do that first. We'll still have to create the file, but we can sort of set it up. So right now we know that, uh, you know, we can say v4 product in products. Uh, we can bind it with a key and we can say we we'll call that product.id and um, what else we should probably say product in here is equal to product okay so now what we need to do is we need to <clears throat> import a card item card and we'll import that from components slash cart okay you don't actually have to add the view extension there i'm just used to doing that okay so cart item card and then in here we're going to I have to declare that component and that'll be card item card and we'll throw an error here we expect that um, now let's go up to we're gonna have to create a directory here so we'll create a file we'll say cart slash cart item card w all right okay 
Perfect. So this one's going to be pretty simple. Uh, we'll <clears throat> create a couple of classes to make this uh, actually happen. So we'll say, we'll call this one cart-item-cart. Uh, and we'll create another div and we'll call that class header. Okay. Now within the header, we're going to have basically three items that are going to be laid out like a row where we're going to have the name, the quantity order, the total cost. And then below it, we'll have uh, a description of the particular item. So in this case, because we're passing through product, we're going to say product.name. And let's go ahead and declare that prop in here. Okay, and we'll say props. Prodotto. Okay, product. Perfect. Okay, well, I'll put an H4 here. Uh, we'll specify, okay, this is the amount of items in the cart. And that will be product dot uh, quantity. Uh, we'll do another one, another H4. We'll say total cost. Um, and we'll say we'll have to create a computed we'll create a computed uh, property here. So we'll say item cost dot two fixed is going to be two. Now there's two ways that we could do this, like in terms of how we return this computed property. Um, one, I, I can do the calculation right here within the component, or I can make the calculation available to myself by creating a getter in the same way. Uh, for the sake of not cluttering up our store at the moment, because normally I would break that out into several different um, objects and then join all of the objects uh, for, for getters, just to make my code clean and separated well. Um, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll just take care of the calculation right here in the component. So what we want to return is very simple, uh, this dot product dot price times this dot product dot quantity. Okay. Um, all right, that should be good. One other thing we'll create while we're doing this is we'll create uh, a description property. And the description is basically just going to be a substring of the description we created because it's kind of just like we're not trying to explain in the cart view everything about the cart again. You know, you have the drawer that we created in, in the on the last uh, view, so we don't need to do that, right? So here we're just going to return kind of a brief summary of it. So we'll say this dot item, sorry, this dot product dot description dot substring and we'll say from 0 to 120 and now um, below this div we can actually in a p tag put our description okay so that page should show for us it's not going to look pretty uh, let's go ahead and save this oh. Card, item card. Okay, so why is that not properly bringing that in? This dependency was not found. Oh, yeah, so I just have to put a forward slash. Perfect, okay. And now when I save this one, you can see it recompiles as well. So now we can go back out here to our cart, and I mean, we should see something. Apparently we don't. Um, products was accessed during render, but was not defined on the instance. All right, let's go back to our main view here. Okay, that's because I labeled this as items. I'll label this as products. And now you can see it works just fine. Okay. Your card covers slippers, blah, blah, blah. So now we just need to do some styling in here. 
And then the last component we need to create is basically the total of everything that's in the cart, uh, which isn't that difficult to do. And we'll probably just do that one in the component as well, but we could create a getter for it uh, to do all that calculation as well in the actual store. So let's go to our cart item card in here. Um, just two classes, and one is kind of a child class of another class anyways. So uh, we'll say style and our shorthand lang equals scss. All right. And we'll say dot cart dash item dash card. And we'll say width is 90%. Margin, uh, we'll make 5%. Um, background color, uh, we want to make that white. Box dash shadow, and we want to go 0, 0, 5 pixels, and we'll say gray. Uh, border radius, we want to make that 5 pixels. And padding, we want to make that 10 pixels within the card. And we want to align our text to the left. All right, great. So now we're going to create the header class that we applied. And this will be display equals flex. And just to give it some even spacing, uh, we'll justify content equals space around in there and now it looks all pretty so that's that's good that's exactly what we want um, in there now we need to create another card on the bottom to calculate everything else um, in there okay let's switch from here to here we can refresh this and again because we're storing everything in um, our local storage we can then retrieve it when the app reloads. So very useful, right? Um, okay, so let's go back to our cart card in here. And we're going to create a component. And we'll go ahead and we'll call this component cart summary. Payment card. Okay. Because we're pulling everything in from the store, we don't need to pass it any props or anything like that. But what we do need to do is uh, pull in the component and then uh, register it. So cart summary payment card from components. Maybe this will throw an error. We expect that. Uh, so in here, we'll say cart summary payment card. Okay. Create a template. View as well. Is defined but not used. Okay, that's because we haven't registered it. All right. Perfect. There we go. And that reloads without uh, us having to do anything in there. Okay. This was going to be a really simple card in here. Um, we're going to borrow the class from the other component because that is registered globally, not specific to that specific component. So we'll say cart item card. And in here, we'll do an H3 and we'll say cart total. And we'll say cart underscore total to fixed to. Okay. And we'll say view product button. So that's another one from our first view that we created. Um, that's where we're pulling in that particular class. Okay. And we'll just say pay by credit card. All right, and we need to pass through this computed property. 
and that one is going to be cart total and we're going to return uh, using the getters we're going to pull in our card items okay just like we did um, on the previous page so if, if we go to that, its parent component that's what we did there right um, so actually you know what this is kind of some way we could actually rework this a little bit so instead of saying cart we'll still use cart total as a computed property we need we should pass products uh, as a prop into this one so I know I said no props but it makes sense to actually have a prop yeah products equals products uh, just like we have here okay now we'll go to our computed property we'll pull in our props all right and now what we're going to do is through these items we're going to and, we, and this is probably something you'd want to put in as a getter anyways so i'll let you do that because we've built a few getters together should be kind of uh, straightforward uh, that way so um no sorry i want to do this dot products Originally, when I when I built this, I pulled it as a getter out of there, but we don't actually have to. So um, we're going to go through this, and actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to do it the original way I intended uh, it to be done, so you can see how this implements um, this implements creating a getter basically. So we already have the getter. So store dot getters dot cart total is what we're going to call this one. Okay. Now, uh, do I have to do that? No, I don't. Okay, cart total. So let's go to our cart, our store in here. I'm going a little bit off of my um, script here, but. Cart total, we just need to pass the state through. And we simply need to return state.cart. We need to reduce it, so we're basically going to perform an operation on it um, to, you know, to basically add everything up together. So that's how we do it using this higher order function. And we'll say a plus uh, b.price times b dot quantity and then we need to initialize it with a value to begin with okay so i've done this now um in here but so i don't know if it's obvious how this works but this number will initially represent a but any value that we create here gets pa gets gets uh, passed on to uh, a for the next time that it runs through uh, as it loops through okay that's how the reduce higher order function actually works now we go to part cart payment we'll say cart total to fixed we should see uh, we should see that at the bottom and perfect uh, we do so that's great and you can see we see pay by credit card um, view product button uh, that must that must be called something else somewhere else oh you know what I did uh, just to get that working let's go to home come down here no nope, not home um, product summary card yeah product summary card is what we want so let's go to products and we'll say product summary card here okay and I'm just going to take so button dot view product button because this is nested within our other component I want to make this kind of available globally right okay now let's go back here and see what that looks like and you can see that looks pretty good um, definitely no complaints on my end for that one so cart total. So that's basically a summary of, of a very basic system, a very basic cart uh, system that you can easily extend. Very extensible. 
Um, and you can see, I mean, obviously I built this beforehand. It probably took me about five, six hours to flush it all out the way I wanted to, to make this simple. But you could extend it, you know, you could factor in, uh, adding coupons, um, all sorts of things that you could add or uh, add into this. But this is how essentially what the takeaways from this, the router, that's pretty basic, pre very basic implementation that we put in there. Uh, how we can use a preprocessor's uh, SAS to compile our CSS and then, of course, to make it available globally, but build it in the components when we actually have to manage it. Uh, we do it that way. Um, how to work with the store, how to update local storage and then to pull from local storage uh, so that you have a way of persisting the data before you actually pass this on to your, uh, onto your back end to process the cart, to process the payment, to record all the details so on and so forth so hope you enjoyed that video definitely uh if possible give me a if you liked it please give it a, a like thumbs up uh if you have any questions please comment let me know what your questions are if you didn't like it go ahead hit the unlike button <laughs> and if you found it useful and you think somebody else will find it useful then please uh take this and share this with someone else all right thanks